Today, we're gonna to be making a buckwheat traditional mead, and I'm pretty excited for it. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead today. I have a bunch of buckwheat honey, which is a very, very interesting um, varietal of honey. It is, as the name says, buckwheat. Uh, it has a more, I'm gonna use the word grassy in a positive way, taste. And you know, the bees harvesting from the wheat itself, you know, it's got a very, I'll just, I'll just tell you, how about this? Yeah, so I, this honey is very molasses-y to, to me, and it also has a, um, a, like a malt extract-esque kind of taste. It's very dark, obviously, you can see here. It is probably one of the darkest honeys I've used, uh, right next to avocado blossom and even kind of mesquite blossom honey. But it is a very, very strong flavored honey. So for this traditional mead, I am gonna be using this recipe. Uh, I'm gonna be using a gallon of water, which I have here, two pounds of the buckwheat honey, that I got from Glory Bee. I'll put a link down in the description. And then two grams of Lavin QA23. I'm choosing the Lavin QA23 because it is a good meat yeast in general. It gets up to 14%, so it can chew through all the sugars we need. It's a low nutrient uh, yeast in general. I normally use it for tropical things, but I think it could be interesting to pull some um, bright flavors out of this dark honey. So that's why I'm doing that. Of course, uh, I'll run you through the steps real fast. Step one, um, in order to make this traditional mead or a traditional mead, you need to get your ingredients and sanitize everything. I have my bucket of star sand water. I've sanitized my bucket, all the stuff I'm using. Number two, we're gonna start mixing in our honey and our water and our yeast. Then we put our, for step three, we're gonna put our airlock in, let it ferment through the primary. Step four is gonna to be to uh, outside of the primary, we're going to rack it into a new container. And then from there, we might add more honey. We might just let it age, who knows? And then step five after that, after it's aged is to bottle. So that's all the steps for making a mead. Let's go ahead and mix things together. I'm gonna to go ahead and do it right now. I've got a scale here so I can measure everything accurately. Let me go ahead and do this. I should also mention, my recipe is one gallon of water because I want to go over one gallon of total volume. Whenever I rack this into a one gallon carboy, I want to fill up the carboy. And that's why I'm gonna have probably 1.2 um, total gallons volume of mead that will turn into one gallon after sediment. All right, I've mixed all of my ingredients, and now we are going to take a gravity reading, meaning you have to have a hydrometer. So let me go ahead and take this uh, reading real fast. So our gravity reading here, after floating this in, shows that we're at roughly about 1.060. And it's kind of hard to tell, you can't see because of those bubbles on the side. With us knowing how high the gravity is, we can figure out how alcoholic it is. You can use this equation here, um, or you can use online calculators. This being at 1.060, um, I'm thinking we're gonna be roughly in the realm of 8.8 to 8.9%. You can also look on the back of the hydrometer and figure that out, um, but it's you are still kind of guessing by that point. So that's our um, ABV. I'll, I've shown it on the screen too, so you can see exactly where it's at. I'm gonna pour this back in. Because uh, this Lavin QA23 does not require a lot of nutrient, we don't have to worry about that. And um, generally, traditional meads are low in nutrient in general, so this is a perfect yeast for this because it doesn't have a lot of nutrient need. Let me go ahead and measure out two grams of our QA23 yeast. There are two things you can do. You can either pitch your yeast right on top um, or you can rehydrate them. I personally like to rehydrate my yeast. However, I didn't do it this time. Um, I have done a comparison between rehydrated and not rehydrated. And the general thing I found is that the yeast pick up more quickly if they are rehydrated. So um, I could go ahead and put some water in this thing, let them rehydrate for 10, 15 minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and just pitch them in on top. So here's our two grams. Here's our two grams of yeast. I'm gonna pitch them in right on top. I have now three grams left in this packet. I will just fold it over. I will put it into a Ziploc bag and reuse it for another mead in the future. 
The last thing we can do is we can take and um, mix this thing up even more, which is what I'm gonna do. That'll help to continue to oxygenate the must. And I could, I have a little oxygen stone. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up throwing that in here to add more oxygen in so that the yeast have oxygen to ferment with. So let me go ahead and mix this up a little bit more. Then we'll put our lid on and we'll let it start fermenting. All right, we're ready to put our lid on. And this is gonna go through the primary fermentation. The thing with buckwheat honey is I didn't use a lot because it's a powerful um, tasting honey. It also, I didn't really want this to be an extremely high gravity mead. With us being in that 8.5 to 9% range, I think that's pretty standard and pretty good. Um, this is already gonna be a very interesting mead as is. So I am going to throw my airlock onto this. I will also take and um, put a label on telling me what it is and the ingredients and the starting gravity, and we will let this go through the primary fermentation. I'll update you if anything crazy happens, but I'm not uh, anticipating anything totally wild happening with this mead. So let's see how the primary fermentation goes. All right, it has been 20 days since we started the primary fermentation on the buckwheat traditional. It is here and it is finished fermenting. I can tell you this because I took my uh, original gravity, which was 1.060, roughly, I think about a 7.8%, 7.9%, and um, it is ended at 1.000. So OG, 1.060, after the primary, 1.000. Let's go ahead and take a quick taste test, tell you what I'm getting, then we'll rack it over. The interesting thing about the buckwheat honey is that it is, um, it is such a strong character, such a strong flavor in general. The aroma on it is super molasses-y, malty, um, a little caramel-y. I can tell you this is definitely gonna have a little bit of a tannic value just from the smell of it. I know that seems weird, but let's taste it. Mmm. Well, smell and aftertaste, or smell and taste are totally different things. You get a lot of sweetness on the nose. It smells like it's gonna be sweet, but this thing is obviously dry, 1.000. Yeah, that first sip was just jarring because of the nose. It's definitely dry, a little bit fruity now. Uh, you get the grassy kind of taste, it's buckwheat honey, so it has that. It's really not bad, it does need to be bolstered up some. Yeah, I definitely think this needs two things. One, it needs a little bit more honey to pronounce maybe the sweet side of buckwheat. So I'm tempted, this sounds weird. No, I'm not gonna do that. I was gonna say I might put not, uh, I might put like clover honey in or something just cause that's a sweeter taste. However, I wanna keep it as a buckwheat honey, no clover. Um, I need to bolster that flavor. So we're gonna put more buckwheat honey in. I'll tell you about that. The second thing we need is uh, time. So yeah, this thing's gonna need some time to age out. Got a little souring taste to it. Not bad. It's not like it's gone bad or anything, but I don't wanna leave this in the bucket. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack it over real fast into a, this, into a new container real fast. And then um, we will, I'll tell you about my next step. All right, as you can see, this thing has been moved over into this glass carboy. I don't say this a lot in my videos, but I always do it. I always sanitize everything. This is my bucket of uh, star sand water. I rinse everything before I use it to eliminate any bad bacteria. Yes, I don't say it before everything I do, but then you have to hear the same phrase over and over again. Anyways, we're done with that. Moved it into here. Um, I have a couple different options. I can leave this as is, um, which I will do for the moment to let any extra sediment, anything drop to the bottom, we'll rack it over again. Hopefully with time, it'll become a little more clear. As far as uh, enhancing flavor, what I wanna do is I wanna back sweeten this. In order to back sweeten it without adding more alcohol, we are gonna need to stabilize this. Now I teeter sometimes between using potassium sorbate, which is a, um, a chemical stabilizer that a lot of people use, people use all the time in things, and then pasteurizing, which is where you heat the liquid up and it kills the yeast. Um, however, with this one, I want to use potassium sorbate, which is something I'll put in soon um, after this is cleared up some. So let me let this age for a few more weeks. Hopefully it begins to um, clear up and then we'll add some more we'll add some potassium sorbate to stabilize. Then we'll safely be able to add honey, buckwheat honey on top to um, make it a little sweeter. 
All right, it's been another three weeks since I have done anything with it. This thing is in total, I think we're a couple months old. I can't remember exactly how long, but uh, here's another taste test of it with some more age. So we have the same thing. It's a little bit bitey from the alcohol, a little bit souring from the buckwheat. And originally I had the thought to go ahead and um, and add more buckwheat honey. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going, going to take and add a combination of like maybe an eighth of a pound of buckwheat and an eighth of a pound of clover honey. But before we can do that to bolster this, yeah, that definitely needs some help. Um, it's, it's good, it just, it's got some weird extra bite. And I think too much buckwheat honey would be bad in this case. Before we can do that, we need to stabilize. So let me go ahead and add my potassium sorbate and metabisulfite like I talked about. All right, so these have been introduced. Sorbate, metabisulfite. We can't put our honey in yet. We wanna make sure that this really gets into the meat and kills any possible yeast that are in there still, even though we've reacted a few times. So I'm gonna be back in about 24 hours from now and then we'll back sweeten and we'll decide, we'll probably end up bottling it after that because, um, well actually we'll wait another 24 because we want to make sure there's no fermentation after that. So I'll be back in 24 hours. Okay, so I forgot to mention, I did just rack it over about five minutes ago because after the primary, it had a lot of sediment. I racked it again, had a lot of sediment. This is what's left over. I added 3.1 ounces of honey to this thing and it tastes like Ooh, that's much better. It's got more body to it. It was very light. Didn't have a lot of like real um, fullness to, to uh, fill out the body of it, which is nice. But also it didn't have a lot of sweetness. So there was so much tart from the buckwheat and then alcohol combination that we kind of lost the true essence of mead to me, which is honey character. So this has more honey character. I like that. Ooh. You still get a lot of buckwheat, caramel, uh, molasses-y, wheat-y kind of honey, or character, I should say. But we do get the sweetness, the warmth from clover honey. This thing's really good. Now our next step is going to be to take and put my airlock back on this. We're gonna ensure that there's no any, there's not any more fermentation. So uh, I'm gonna watch over the next 24 to 48 hours roughly to see if there's any fermentation. If not, then we'll go ahead and bottle it. So here is that. The gravity reading post back sweetening matters, because it does. We are currently at 1.008. So we started at one point, I believe zero, my terrible handwriting here. It looks like six zero, but it could be eight zero. I'll put it right on the screen. Ended after the primary at 1.000. After back sweetening and stabilizing, of course, we are at 1.008. So here's my current ABV for this, assuming there's no re-fermentation. So let's go now to the bottling stage. All right, so it hasn't had any re-fermentation. It's just been chilling, which is nice. Here's a little taste test. It's this, it's a, it's kind of a weird mead just cause the buckwheat honey has its own punch in your face flavor. That's kind of grassy and not it's okay to me. This is like out of 10 to me, like a, especially right now, a six out of 10 mead. Um, will it get better with some age? For sure. But I do think buckwheat is a hard flavor to use and a buckwheat traditional mead is definitely a little bit of a niche product. So let's still bottle it. I think it's gonna be good. Need some age like every single mead does. We're only, this month, uh, mead is like two months old two months and a week old. So we've got, it's got some age on it, but still needs more. Let's bottle it. Everything's been sanitized. This is my star sand water solution, all this stuff I've been mead making today. So uh, I'm gonna bottle all these and then I'll be right back. I will say the clover honey that we used has definitely helped to even out a lot of the buckwheat. So it's a little bit smoother, which is nice. Let me finish bottling these. All 
All right, I do have labels for these that are not printed out yet, um, or they might be printed out. I just need to go pick them up. They look like this right here. So this is again, just a buckwheat traditional, pretty standard. And um, I think with some age, this thing is gonna be awesome. I hope that you guys are excited for a taste test in the future. If you wanna see a taste test of lots of my meads and commercial meads and things, go check out the Man Made Mead Extras channel. Um, it's where I post all those things and my podcast and that stuff. So there's that. Uh, I hope you go check that out, but I've enjoyed getting to do this. I hope you've enjoyed getting to watch um, a buckwheat traditional. I have some other, lots of other meads planned. Um, this one, it's okay for now. We'll see if it gets better. So thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. I hope you will join me for a video in the future. See you next time. Cheers. Thank you.